uh, welcome to the module 2 of our spring boot course in this lesson we are going to cover the spring boot project structure uh, the the things which we are going to cover in this one is uh, where you should be putting your uh, your files right for example if you are creating a java code where it should be uh, into the your structure if you are creating a template for example a thigh miley template a simple html template uh, page where should be uh, we, we should be putting that page right or you have a static content uh, there are certain conventions if you follow those conventions into the spring boot a uh, life will be much easier for you and uh, you don't have to configure you don't have to do those extra uh, code changes and all those kind of a things okay so let's quickly get into the those details all right uh, so this is uh, one of the sample application we use the, the spring initializer service which we uh, discuss in more uh, in a greater detail in our last uh, lesson so there are this there is this is a standard layout of the spring boot project and let's quickly get into a couple of details uh, to see uh, as a standard what should you be following while you creating your spring boot application okay so on a high level i am going to uh, just forward out this target so let's clean this out okay so uh, on a high level there are two segregations for your uh, project layout okay one is your java where you about be putting all of your controllers configurations your services DAOs, and all the other stuff okay the other one is i'm going to get uh, uh, going to cover this one in a little bit uh, in a more detail okay the second part is the resource this is where all of your resources your your HTMLs, your configurations will live inside this folder okay if you click this one uh, on a high level there are two separate segregations the static one is uh, if you are working on your any of your web application or known web application probably you may have some static content for example you may have images you might have some js javascript files some css files those things will get into the static folder and this is a convention uh, when i'm saying a convention that means if you put those static contents inside the static folder uh, there are a default configurations in place by spring boot so those will be automatically recognized by the spring boot okay uh, you can always do a better segregation there for example on, under the static content you may want to separate out css files into a different folder js file into a different folders okay so you can always create two separate folders but if you follow these conventions uh referring or loading these static contents will be much much easier okay we will be going to get into more details how you can uh, basically refer to those things but for now just keep that in mind that why a static folder is there okay the second one is the template uh, because if you are working on the web technology you may be using a different uh, template for example you may be using a gsp you may be using a mustaches you may be using a timey leaf so those template will get into it right uh, again there are some built-in integration with the spring boot for example if you're uh, if you are creating your view using timey leaf all you have to do is to put your html fold, uh, files into this template folder and then you don't have to make any extra configuration for example if you're using a jsp you have to use the prefix you have to uh, uh, define your basic uh, or the base or the root folder those kind of a things probably you don't need into time leaf right put your uh, html into the template folder you should be good to go all the other integrations all the other details will be automatically taken care by the spring okay but still if you are working on the jsp that is still should be your go-to point you may need a couple of more uh, extra step to configure that the last one is your application property file this is the property file which you can use to override the default configurations or behavior of your application okay so i'm just i have taken two example uh, for example uh, you don't want to run your uh, tomcat server on 8080 or you can run it on a 7070 all you have to do is uh, the property name of the property and then the value okay okay uh, so what i was talking about this uh, main class right so the recommendation is to uh, put it into the root package and the reason is because you have a spring boot annotation uh, assigned to this uh, main class 
and that also or implicitly work as a search package or the base search package if you remember i was talking about the annotation right uh, the scan annotation uh, how does it work because uh, probably you may want to define your controller here so you want to define your services here maybe another uh, package which is going to define a dao and you are not def you are not basically um, defining any xml configuration so how does spring uh, get to know that okay where i should be uh, doing the 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 scanning right how i should be reading all the metadata and then i'm i should be creating the bean and that is one of the hint which you are going to give your spring boot application put your main class into the root package which is also going to work as your base search uh, right so that means uh, it's going to scan all the classes in this package as well as all the sub packages or under this one okay so in this case because my application is into the com.java.dev journal it is also not only going to scan this one spring boot but it's also going to scan the controller uh, package it's also going to scan the data package it's also going to scan the services package this is really important right if you are not doing this carefully and think about it right if you are putting your spring hto's application onto your service folder okay what is going to happen is it's going to scan all the packages under this or other sub packages so that means it's not going to scan the controller it's not going to scan the data so if you have defined any of your bean under these configurations probably those won't be available okay so keep that in mind right and this is this is a tricky thing until unless you really want to uh, tell the spring okay but what is my uh, base package where you should be scanning it you can always configure that but probably on a standard application that's not the way to go uh, the last thing uh, which is uh, really important in this is uh, there are two things in short right i quickly want to cover the pom.xml this is the central place to manage configure your project dependencies any dependencies if you want to add any dependencies you should be adding something into your dependency section if you want to remove some dependency you think that this is no longer required you just remove that one and then you should be good to go okay and other con project specific configurations will also happen into the pom.xml for example uh, what should be my uh, java version uh, source encoding what should be my source encoding and all those kind of a different things okay the last part is these two things mvnw and mvnw cmd okay these are the two additional things which will be created if you are using a spring initializer to create uh, your spring uh, boot application structure different flavors of okay uh, so first thing is these are the maven wrappers so if you are creating a maven based application it is going to create a maven wrapper if you are using a grader it's going to create a grader wrapper okay these are two different flavors uh, the first one on this one this one uh, mvnw is the linux or the mac flavor of it uh, the dot cmd is the uh, is the window flavor for it okay why these are a part of your spring uh, uh spring boot project is because uh, uh these this allow you to run your maven project without having maven installed and present on your path so that means uh, if you remember in the first lesson i was talking about okay you should have a maven into your class path because it's kind of a, it's a really a uh, tool to kind of a go to tool or uh, uh, where you are working onto the different application that's the way you basically use the, uh, the maven but if you don't have that one these these uh, these scripts or these files will help you uh, to build your application without even installing it internally what happen is uh, the maven uh, if you use this command it's going to use your uh, maven repository which is dot m2 repository and it's going to download the maven into that repository and going to use that one okay so if you want to see how we can use it is all you have to do is mvn and then run the normal uh, maven commands okay and if you see 
this is working as a standard maven command right so what internally is happening it's downloading all the maven things and everything else for you uh, and then it's basically using that uh, maven uh, in, inside the m2 folder so our uh, the build is successful everything is working at, like you have the maven installed your in your path okay so this is an overall Oh, oh, kind of uh, the layout of your Spring Boot project. This is really uh, important if you want to start working on your Spring Boot application. Okay, Spring Boot is not a traditional way of creating a web application or any kind of a different Spring powered application, right? You you follow certain conventions, and as I said, your life will be much much easier for you, right? You don't have to write those boilerplate code. You don't have to add those. 10 or 20 lines of uh, code or the configurations just to set up your uh, application okay all right i think we sh we are good now let's start creating our first uh, uh, let's start creating uh, our spring boot application